Hi there guys, welcome back to another update from UK Reefer. I hope you're all keeping very safe and well. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to say a big thank you to all the subscribers that we've had so far. We're quickly reaching a thousand subscribers now, so it's going great. And those of you that are new to the channel, if you just want to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, that'll notify you when we release a new video. Uh, at the moment, we're trying to release them weekly. Uh, but like I said, guys, thanks again for all the support so far. It's, uh, it's really helped us grow. In this video, we're going to talk about removing metals from a reef tank. Now, those of you that saw last week's video, uh, if you didn't, if you just hit that link up the top there, that'll take you to last week's video. Um, we have basically had a very ropey Triton ICP test come back. Now, back in February, we did an ICP, which came back near perfect, and there was no metals or anything in the tank, and it was very little that we had to dose. But then, unfortunately, we've had an ICP back, come back in March, which is basically completely the opposite. Now, as I said in the previous video, I wasn't overly convinced that we'd got these metals in the tank. Uh, I really wasn't. I even reached out to Triton, who, uh, who actually blamed the salt and have since blamed some coral food that we're using. I'm still not com completely convinced, to be honest. Um, but anyway, because we're in the middle of this lockdown, I thought I'd just follow it. Um, so I bought a bottle of Triton's Detox, which was £26 online. Uh, we basically had to dose 3 mil per 100 litres. And on dosing it, I also had to remove the carbon and GFO from the tank for three days. Now, I'll be honest, when I came to dosing this stuff, I really didn't want to do it. It was quite thick, dark brown, black, gloopy stuff. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of chemicals anyway, but looking at this stuff, I really didn't want to touch it. But with us being on this lockdown, I decided to just add it, trust them, and uh, and follow the instructions. So the instructions were to dose three mil per 100 litres, remove any carbon, and remove any GFO that you had in the system. So I did that, ran it for three days, and then after three days, I then added the carbon back in. And the idea is this detox is like a blend of organics that binds heavy metals together. And then as it's passing through the carbon, the carbon basically absorbs it. So then when you take it out after a week, theoretically, you're taking out the carbon and the heavy metals with it, hopefully. The main issues I had was I started to notice that certain corals were starting to take a bit of a nosedive after using this stuff. Uh, I just presumed it might be because my phosphates were starting to climb. So normally they're at 0.03, but I noticed after a couple of days they were going up to 0.05, then 0.08. And by the third day, I think they're at 0.1, uh, which is a lot higher than I'd normally run it. I was losing a bit of colour, but I just put that down to the high phosphates. Uh, my alkalinity consumption, consumption had also gone down, um, so I was having to lower my doses per day. But again, I put that down to the phosphate. So then after three days, I added the carbon in, added some GFO in. Unfortunately, the GFO had to go in a media bag, which was obviously it's not as effective in a bag. But I ran it anyway and then waited out the week uh, on which I then removed the carbon. Uh, unfortunately, my corals were really starting to suffer. And the footage that you've been looking at so far was previous to detox. Unfortunately, this is the footage of the tank now. As you can see, the green plate in Monty that we've got has really faded out and browned out. Uh, but the two I'm most gutted about at the moment are the two Goniaporas that I've had for the best part of two and a half years. Uh, they've really, really struggled. Uh, I'm not overly sure if it's because the detox has stripped elements out of the tank that they needed. I'm really, really not sure. I've never used it before. Obviously, it's designed to bind metals together and, and take them out. I don't know what else it binds. Uh, but it seems that ever since I used them, they've really, really struggled. So first thing I did was I've moved them out of the high flow area they were in. And I've, I've put them in like a bit of a shaded area just to hopefully help them recover. And the other thing I've done is I've been following the 15% water changes um, literally weekly. 
uh, with Red Sea Blue Book It Salt. Now I know obviously Triton originally blamed, well partially blamed the salt, they said it could be a contamination from the salt. Uh, like I said, I'm still not overly convinced it was that, but luckily enough, we've started on a brand new bucket anyway. So, fingers crossed in the next few weeks, it starts to bounce back because uh, it'll be gutting to see them go, obviously, after having them for so long. If anyone watching's had a similar experience, if you could just drop us a comment below with what your experience was, who you dealt with, and what you've done to rectify it i'd really really appreciate it because obviously at the moment i'm trying to move quite quickly well as quickly as i can obviously these tanks don't like big changes fast um but i've got to try and do something just to try and rectify the situation to save obviously these these corals that are struggling fingers crossed these water changes are going to make them bounce back and i am going to continue to to document what's going on um but if if anyone has experienced a problem uh, if you could just drop us a comment below just to let us know what you did to rectify the situation, I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to cut the video short there, um, but hopefully this time next week I'll be releasing the next video, uh, which at the moment I think is going to be about the bubble algae issue that we've had. As it stands, we'd only added emerald crabs to try and sort the situation out, but we've actually had a minor miracle this week uh, in terms of the bubble algae. So... I'll release that in next week's video along with how these corals are getting on and fingers crossed it's starting to bounce back. Like I said guys, thanks again for your help and support. If it wasn't for all of you liking the videos and subscribing to the channel, uh, it wouldn't be growing like it is. So like I said, I've got a lot of uh, appreciation to everyone that's followed the channel so far and uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week. So thanks again guys.